Last time we made the waffle guitar pickup and the results were amazing. But we're not done. One of the most common questions was, will this work for bass? And I think we should find out. So we need to redesign the pickup completely to suit bass strings. The bass has less strings and at a different spacing. So looking at a Fender Jazz bass or a P bass, there's magnetic pull pieces either side of each string. So we're going to use a similar approach, but we'll evenly space out our magnets. So each row has eight magnets. So let's open up FreeCAD. I've created this box and this is going to be the central part of the pickup bobbin. We need to round off the edges as the wire will not like this when we try and wind it. And next we need to add some ends of the bobbin. A little bit more rounding of the edges and then we can add some holes for the magnets. I've also added some holes to mount the pickup. But we've got 13 rows of 8 magnets. That is 104 magnets. A standard jazz or P bass only has 8 magnets. And this is where the power is going to come from. I really hope this doesn't blow up my amp. I've added a few more fillets and chamfers to help the design and this should help with winding and mounting it. But this is starting to look quite special. So let's get this onto the Ender Free 3D printer. I've split the part in two just so we can glue it together and this should give it a better finish. And I'm also using a fantastic purple filament. This is going to be so good to look at. I want you to think about Will this work? What do you think it's going to sound like? The original guitar version, to me, sounded like an acoustic guitar. As the magnetic field is so big, it picks up all the sounds from the body and the strings. Who do you think this pickup would be ideal for? I think this pickup could slap your back. So watch yourself, Davey 504. This could break your arm. I think this is going to be able to talk to whales with this much power and bass. Here's a standard guitar pickup bobbin. Here's the waffler. And then here, this is the bass waffler. Look how big it is. It looks amazing, but I just can't get over how big it is. We need to get this wound and into a guitar. Now, unfortunately, when I built my pickup winder, it's not big enough for this pickup. So I've had to add a block to actually shim it higher so that it can spin without hitting the ground. I am gonna make a video and share the plans for this winder very soon. But this thing is gonna use so much wire and so many magnets. Okay, so I've added a terminal to the back of the pickup and this is the moment of truth. This just took four hours to wind and it's the scariest part of making something like this. If for some reason any one of those electrical wires is damaged, the signal won't get through and we've got a dead pickup and we'll probably have to start again. The wire will be hard to salvage so the wire in the bobbin will probably have to be binned and the whole process being a waste. So let's get the multimeter on this. Oh yeah, it's alive. But we still need to add in all 104 magnets. All right, it's done. This took a while and a lot of drilling and pushing and hammering those magnets in to make sure all magnets are at the same orientation. And we still have electrical continuity. I can't wait to hear this. So this is a standard single coil pickup from a guitar. This is a humbucker from a guitar. And this is the waffle of bass. It, I can't get across how heavy it is. I really love how the pull pieces look. It's like a disco ball. Imagine if you were playing live. This would be firing light across the venue in all directions as you move the guitar. We need to find a bass that's worthy for this pickup. And while browsing my favourite music store, Cash Converters, I see it. I see it in the window. Look at this Encore bass. It's a P bass copy, but look. The P stands for power. And on the headstock, it has the word blaster. I know a thing or two about marketing, and you can't just slap the word blaster on anything. It needs to be something really special. So I know this is gonna be ideal. So we've got a body. Let's get it fitted. This seems to be a standard P bass copy. I don't think there's anything too special on the outside that gives the word a blaster magic, so it must be on the inside. But I do find it amazing how you can get hold of an instrument like this for so cheap, and in reality it's so close to a high-end instrument. A good setup and a nice pickup in there and some nice electronics, and you might struggle to tell the difference. Let's take this apart. Sadly, when Encore were designing this bass, they never envisioned the waffle of bass pickup. 
And I guess I understand. So we're going to have to remove some wood. No worries. A little chop chop here and a chop chop there. And I think we're good. And it's also good that we've also got a warranty with this base. A real peace of mind. Oh man, this really is a piece of art. Hello? You're phoning from the Tate Gallery? Oh, sorry, the Tate Gallery. You, you can't have this guitar. This is mine. So I've cut out the pit guard and I've rebuilt this up. And let's just take a moment to visually take this in. This may not be the best setup, but I'm going to try just plugging it in through a DI box straight into my sound card. I'm not the best bassist in the world. Please comment who you think should have a go at this and, and test it to its limit. Put it in the comments or even post this video to them. This thing needs to be pushed, but yeah, let's go. So, I really quite like the sound, it's really interesting. It wasn't what I was expecting, but what do you think you should do next with this? And if you enjoyed this video, please share, like or subscribe, and we see where else we can take this concept. But for now, that's it.